Welcome! This is the third and potentially the final installment on my Z8000 modular computer video. In previous videos I called that the Clover computer because it was built with like four pedals like a four leaf Clover or an optional five pedal version. In this video we're going to be showing a different configuration which I call the brick because it's your standard vertical backplane with a bunch of cards stuck in it. Okay, and this video is going to focus on the keyboard and video processing so that you can just hook a keyboard up to it and you can hook the video up to your LCD monitor and just like the computers of old it can be completely standalone. Now some of the old computers in the olden days you did have to hook up a terminal to them but then we got to the point where a lot of them, particularly the consumer grade ones, something like your TRS-80 Coco, you know it had its keyboard built into it and you'd hook it up to a video monitor or to your TV or whatever. So that's what we're going to kind of go with here. I'm going to add additional boards to this so that we get the video output. I'm going to do that in both 40 columns and in 80 columns. Then I'm going to hook up keyboard. I'm going to build the keyboard myself, hook it up to this. We'll scan the keyboard um, using the typical matrix scan so that you'll be able to type away. You'll have your standalone Zilog Z8000 computer. Okay, so let me quickly show you the different ways that you can build this computer. So in the previous two videos, I've showed off what I call the Clover configuration. Originally it was four-leaf Clover. This is a five-leaf Clover where the whole thing sits out flat on your tabletop. You've got this kind of big motherboard in the middle. Everything plugs in. Get like five boards this way. Um, that's great, but it's kind of limited in how far it can scale. You know, doing this with eight boards, it'd be an octagon. It'd be even bigger. So the next configuration is the brick. And you can see the brick here. It's got a total of eight slots. One of them I decided to put a right angle out the back so that you could still come in and plug in a board under test in backwards, but it could have been straight up and down. I 3D printed a little case here that has some slots, kind of hold stuff in place. And it's relatively easy with the brick to just come in, plug a card in if you want, or take a card back out. It still has the same functionality, but it uses up less space on the desk and you're now up to eight slots instead of uh, five with the Clover configuration. And then finally we have the stacked configuration. So here I've got a stack. This is just two boards. Um, the bottom one is the CPU board. The top one is the memory board. Did away with the ZIF sockets. I put in normal sockets just to show something a little bit different. And this is sort of your minimum uh, two board configuration. It's just the two boards stacked one on top of the other. I use some uh, special 2x40 stacking headers that I found on eBay and then you could just you could keep plugging board after board after board. You could probably stack at least eight of them in this configuration. I think it'd work fine. But this is a good way to build sort of a minimal computer if you you know wanted to get one of these up and running with sort of a limited amount of investment would be going with the stack configuration. Even in a two board computer like this you can plug your serial in and you've got a 16-bit Z8000 computer uh, with a couple of serial ports and some flash storage and some RAM. Okay, so I've always been a fan of the standalone computer, a computer with its own keyboard and its own ability to display video. So I wanted to go take that step with the Z8000 project that I'd been working on. Now I looked around the web and I found some resources. The primary thing that I found was this thing here. This is... Um, TMS 9918 for the RC2014 by J.B. Langston. And he's got a nice little card here for the RC2014. I've never actually built it myself. Uh, but his schematic is up here. You can look at it. It looked reasonable. So I pretty much just lifted it as my own. Now if you follow the links, he will describe how this thing works in this circuit by Tom Laments. And there's actually a slight, uh, like a little white paper on this describing how this circuit worked and how they took and re they replaced the dynamic RAMs with a, with a static RAM. And they had to get all the timings right, so it goes through some gates to do this. I started out here with um, J.B. Langston's uh, schematic and made my own around it. So um, what you're going to see here is, is something I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because... Everything pretty much up here is just straight out of that RC2014 board. So you've got the TMS9918, the video chip. It does uh, like 40 columns by 24 rows or so. Uh, video comes out. It goes through a little transistor driver here. And it sends out composite video out the composite jack. It's got a crystal, of course. Then all the magic over here is due to um, working with that static RAM. 
Um, so you push some stuff through some gates here to do the, the column address timing, some latches to hold various things. So we put them into the RAM chip at the right time. And then uh, this here should be, um, it's a 62256. Yeah, it is a 62256, so a 32K static RAM chip. So anyway, that's just straight out of that RC2014 board, all this stuff here. Um, I added an address decoder of my own. Uh, I mean, you always need to do your address decoding, so I used an ATF16V8 uh, programmable logic device. I've used that for most of the other Z8000 boards. Simply looks at the incoming address lines as well as the I.O. read and I.O. write, and it sends either a chip select read or a chip select write. So that gets you through uh, the video circuit, and, you know, I'll show the board, and we'll go try the board out, um, and you'll see it produce uh, text. But the other thing I wanted to do was not just have video, but also have keyboard. And what I chose to do there is to use a Zilog Z8536. That is known as the CIO. And it is a counter timer with a parallel I.O. chip. So, you know, if you're familiar with other projects like a Z80 stuff, you'd have a separate CTC and a PIO, a counter timer and a parallel I.O. This here kind of combines those functions together into the same IC. And that, that makes it really useful because you've got one IC, you can do both your timing as well as your I.O., and it can generate interrupts. It, you look at the manual, it does like a fantastic amount of stuff with this one chip. So anyway, what this thing is going to do is we're going to program this thing 20 times a second to wake up and scan the keyboard. And we're going to do our keyboard old, old school with a, like a row and column scanning approach where we will uh, we'll, we'll strobe various rows of the keyboard and then we'll read and see which columns are pressed. So it works kind of like a matrix, you know, if, if a particular key is down and you strobe its row, you'll see that its column comes down. So you, you do that 20 times a second, you wake up and you do that strobing and we'll use some pins here on this connector. Now I plumbed all of the connector um, through here to all the IO lines, but the first 16 lines I made compatible with an MSX keyboard. Because as we will say, see later, um, Sergei Kisilev has designed a very nice uh, MSX keyboard that you could build with cherry switches. You can plug that right into here. So this one board is going to get us both the video and the keyboard I.O. Okay, here is the video board. So down here, as usual, we've got a connector for the back plane. We've got the TMS9918 IC here, the video chip. We've got its uh, RAM over here. We've got various glue logic to go with it, as well as address decoder. We have the Z80 CIO, the Z8536 is there with its associated crystal. Uh, some pull-ups for the key for reading the keyboard, and here is the um, plug that goes to the MSX keyboard. Then, of course, here we have a jack for video output. Okay, and the keyboard I'm going to use is this one here. This is the. MSX keyboard from Sergei Kisilev's uh, Omega MSX computer. So I built this one myself from Sergei's uh, PCB art and uh, schematic and such. And rather than designing my own keyboard because it's a pain to lay all that stuff out, I just went with the one that Sergei designed. It was an easy solder. See lots of uh, Cherry MX switches. I ended up using MX uh, blue switches for mine. A uh, couple ICs and a cable here for the ribbon cable to come out um, and hook up to the computer. But yeah, nice clicky mechanical keyboard. Okay, to add video to the computer, I'm going to take my video board and I'll plug it into an unused slot. There we go. See up there from the top, we've got our video board sitting right there. Now we can wire up the composite to there and wire up the keyboard to there and we'll do our demo. Okay, let's give this a shot. I'm going to turn it on up the display is up my keyboard is down here let me um, it's picked white on blue that's the default color that I've chosen but I think I like uh, white on black I think video is a little bit better so wrote a tool here we can use to change that vid color X 1 F there we go black on white I think it'll be a little bit more readable and, you know, as you can see, I'm able to type down here on the keyboard. It's working as it should. Um, you're able to see the output on the display. 
if we do something like maze um, 20 by 19, we can run our little maze generator. Uh, we can play Zork. Open mailbox. Take leaflet. Yeah, there's a little bit of a color artifacting in it. Um, we probably got just a, either a little bit off frequency or um, we just don't have a good enough implementation on the board with uh, noise and such. Um, but composite signal is, is kind of hard to um, get a decent picture with. Um, okay, what else can we do? Oh, of course, the speech synthesizer is hooked up. I got my little speaker down here. And tiny basic. There we go, tiny basic working as expected. So I think this did what I was hoping for. We've got a standalone computer just like the olden days. I've got my keyboard, my video display, my composite output. Um, no modern terminal or anything sitting in front of it. But I think we could do better. Uh, so 40 columns is a bit restrictive. Let's see if we can make it work in 80 columns instead. Okay, let's do away with 40 column and switch over to a luxurious 80 column text mode where we can play Zork in style. So I started by scouring the internet as before. And I came across this project by Dean Netherton. These are the yellow MSX series for RC2014. And what these boards do is they take an RC2014 and they replace various parts of it until you get something that is MSX compatible. And here is, uh, for example, the video board. He's got other boards, sound boards, etc. But I was mostly interested in the video board. And if you look at uh, Sergei Kisilev's um, MSX compatible Omega computer, you will find that these boards are very similar to Sergei's uh, circuit. So either one of these is kind of a good reference point to understand what, what I have implemented in my own project. But anyway, Dean has two designs. One of them here is his advanced design which uses the V9958 MSX video processor together with a CXA1645 um, IC to convert uh, the RGB from the MSX video processor into composite or S-video. Sergey's circuit does exactly the same thing using exactly the same parts. Now, Dean also has a second one here, which is his RGB board which is a little bit simpler it does away with the CXA1645 and just has some transistor drivers outputs composite sync as well as red green and blue now to display this you either need a 15 kilohertz monitor or you need something like one of these scan converters these scan converters are for arcade games and they let you take the various different frequencies and convert them to something that your VGA your cheap commodity flat panel VGA consumer monitor might work. So I actually have one of these uh, scan converters. I'll be using that later in the video. Would have been much nicer to have a broadcast quality RGB monitor, but those things cost a fair chunk of change to get something that would take the RGB signal natively. Anyway, so on with the schematic. So the schematic is, you know, right out of Dean's design. Um, I've used it for my own. Uh, we've got the VDP here, the V9958 together with four ramps. Now you can use either 4416s or 4464s, depending on what you got. You might as well use the 4464s and have 128 kilobytes of RAM, but if all you have is 4416s, you can make it with 32 kilobytes of RAM. It won't make any difference for text mode. As with before, we've got an ATF-16 V8 PLD that does the address decoding. We've got Dean's various drivers out of his schematic here to do the red, green, and blue in the composite sync, wired up to a DB15 VGA connector, which isn't actually VGA in this case, it's RGB. Got to go through that scan converter, as well as a set of jacks. Now you'll notice I no longer have the CIO chip on here to do the keyboard and the interrupts and uh, the timing and such. That's because I just ran out of room on the... But what I do have is a second board here, which has the CIO on it. So there we've got our Z8536. I've actually got two of them on here. 
This one down here is the one that we'll be using. I called it um, CS0, Chip Select 0. I put both of them at slightly different addresses. But this one here, exactly like the CIO on the other one, hooked up to exactly the same connector footprint, same pull-ups, everything is there, the same crystal. Can you use the crystal on either one? And then I added a second one. I put a 74HCT138 to switch the addresses between them. So we now have a dual uh, CIO board. We only need one to run the keyboard. Okay, here is the V9958 board. So we've got the V9958 is sitting there. 64 pins, relatively dense. It's got its own crystal sitting over here. Um, we've got its four um, dynamic RAMs. I'm using 4416s right now, uh, which gives us a total of 32k, 32 kilobytes of space. Uh, we've got its address to code there. Jacks here. Um, I didn't have red, green, and blue. I just had red, red, and red. So um, pretend these jacks are red, green, and blue. And then this one here, the black one, is the sync jack. And then here you've got RGB output to hook up to your um, scan converter, various uh, transistor drivers, capacitors, etc. Um, okay. And then, of course, we also have the dual CIO board. So couldn't fit the CIO on the on the board with the um, video this time, so I spun off a second board. Um, I had room enough to put two CIOs, but right here is one for the keyboard. Just like the prior implementation, we've got the chip, some pull-ups, connector for the MSX. There's a 74 HCT138 that's used to multiplex the addresses between the two. Uh, again, a uh, oscillator for the counter timer for those. And then unpopulated header, you can populate this and have some parallel I.O. out there. Okay, now let's convert it over from the TMS9918. We'll pull its board out. And we'll convert it over to the V9958. So I'm going to plug its video board in in place. Hard to line up. There. And then I'm going to add for the keyboard, I will add uh, the dual CIO card. There we go. Got a pretty fully populated computer at this point. And then the, the the display, although it is analog RGB coming out of the video board, it is not suitable for the monitor. The monitor won't tune 15 kilohertz RGB. Um, it wants VGA signal, so we're going to use this GBS 8200 scan converter with GBS control firmware on it. Could hook that up to the RGB output. If we had a 15 kilohertz monitor, we wouldn't need to do this. VGA output cable. Look this up. Let's get power to the GBS 8200. Switch this over. Okay, let's give this a shot. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And there it has come up on screen. Again, I can change the color to something that will maybe um, look a little bit better. On video, let's 0xF1. There, how's that? That Hopefully that's good and readable. Um, maze, um, 20 by 39. We've got our 80 columns of width there. We can play our Zork. You know, um, 80 column screen, much more usable than a 40 column screen. And because, you know, we have the, uh, the timer chip in here that ticks 20 times per second, we can actually do some rudimentary uh, timing with it. Z8K util up clock. I spelled that wrong. There we go. So we've been up for 57 seconds. And you can uh, display the raw ticker. That's in hex, that's actually the count of the 20, uh, 20 times a second ticks. Not the easiest thing to read, probably. Util dash t dash q ticker. But I can send it down here uh, to the display on the TIL311s. Um, again, not sure if you can read them, I can read them pretty well. Anyhow, um, finally this, this thing, you know, I accomplished what I wanted to do. I have, you know, a completely standalone computer. I've got my keyboard, my monitor. I don't need to stick a modern computer in front of it as a terminal. So I'm happy with where I've got this to. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video.
Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.